This is a quick demonstration on the routing information protocol RIP and how it handles passive interfaces. So it works a little bit differently because RIP works a little bit differently in every manner uh, than eRGB and OSPF because RIP does not use a hello mechanism and it will only send out updates of its known networks. So I'm using a very simple network here, CR1 and CR2, 10, 0, 12 between them, and I'm going to advertise these loopbacks into the RIP process. So when you define an interface as passive in iOS, you basically do one thing. You will say, I do not want to transmit protocol related data out of this interface. So in the case of EIGP and OSPF, those are the hellos and the uh, updates. So if I define this interface fat season at zero as passive, I will basically block any hello sent to the multicast address out of this interface. So my neighborship will go down if I'm using ERGP and OSPF. RIP, of course, does not use hellos. So basically defining the interface as passive, blocking the hellos, we don't use hellos, so it doesn't really matter for RIP. However, what it does block is it, send, it blocks the uh, transmission of updates to the multicast address out of that interface. But we will still be able to receive updates from this interface, uh, updates like uh, the 2222 loopback that CR2 is advertising. So that is the major difference between the working of RIP and the workings of OSPF and ERGP. OSPF and ERGP define this interface passive. I will not receive anything on this interface. I will not send out anything on this interface. But with RIP, I will not send out anything out of this interface, but I will receive everything out of this interface. So you can actually set a passive interface default with RIP and still be able to receive all of the routes sent by the other routers. I can also set a passive interface default on all of my interfaces and then define static neighborships over those passive interfaces. And then my neighbors will still be able to receive the routes that I'm advertising. So that's exactly what I'm going to be configuring in this example here. So all of these IP addresses have already been set up and let me bring up my topology and my terminal and let's get started on the configuration. So let me basically uh, show you that I've already set up these IP addresses so I should be able to reach CR1 from CR2 and of course I will no, not be able to reach these loopbacks because it's not no routing protocol has been set up yet. So let's go into configuration mode, router rip. I want to say no auto summary, version 2 because why not? And I want to define some networks. So let's say I want to advertise some networks, uh, 10, 0, 0, And I want to advertise the 1 and I want to advertise the 2. So I'm just going to paste this in on both routers. Let me start on CR1 and CR2 as well. So if I do debug IP RIP, I should see some messages coming in here from the uh, routes of CR1, namely the loopback that I'm interested in. So if I ping this loopback, sourcing it from my own loopback, we should have full reachability between these neighbors. So that is very easy to do. If I go to my Wireshark and if I scroll all the way down, there's my ping. I can see the RIP update here. And in this update, you can see the 10.0.12.2. So CR2 send its update to the multicast address 2.4.0.0.9. And in here we have the loopback. Likewise, CR1 will do the exact same thing and it will send out its own loopback. So that's how these routers know uh, the uh, location or the routes that the neighbor is advertising. It just sends it all to that multicast address. So let's define an interface as passive. Let me go on CR1 and I want to say passive interface default. So let me do a clear IP route and let's do it clear IP route on CR2 as well because RIP uh, send this updates on a 30 second interval and I just want to force this uh, to make it a little bit quicker. So you can see that there's no packet in here in this debug IP RIP, uh, namely the one the, that I'm interested in, the loopback from uh, R1. So that one did not arrive on R2. On R1, if I do show IP route RIP, I can see that I've still got the loopback of R2 in my routing table and I should still be able to reach that from my fast Ethernet zero interface. So that's where the source of this ping is. If I source this from my own loopback, this will time out because R2 does not know the location of my own loopback. So if I go to my Wireshark again, you can see that it's a little bit different now. You can see that R2 is the only one that is sending out updates to this multicast address. And CR1 is not sending anything there because I disabled that with the passive interface command. So how do I fix this network? How do I make sure that CR2 it will still be able to receive the routes from CR1. I can actually set a uh, 
static neighbor over this passive interface. So if I do show IP protocols, that is a handy command for RIP. Well, basically the only command that you have available to you. And in here we can see all the passive interfaces that have been defined. So let's say I want to set a static neighbor, 10.12.2 on CR1. If I do a do on all here, and let me clear the screen. If I do show IP route RIP, and on the top here, we can see that this update uh, came through before the update was actually, the debugging was actually turned off. And that is the loopback of R1, which has now arrived. So you can see I've got it here and I should still be able to reach that from my own loopback. So that's all working just fine. So if I go to my Wireshark again, you see that it's a little bit different now. If I scroll down, you can see that R2 or R1 directly sent that update to the uh, IP address of R2. That's how it received it. So it's not sending it to the multicast address. It is sending it unicast to uh, the specific neighbor that I statically defined. So that's how we will, st we will still be able to send out uh, updates over passive interfaces. And notice that I'm not uh, required to put in this neighbor statement on both of these routers. So if with ERGP, for example, if you put in a neighbor statement, you basically define that interface as passive for sending out multicast updates out of that interface. So if you have a bunch of interfaces or a bunch of neighbors connected on that shared segment, if you define one of the neighbors as uh, statically, you have to define all of them. Otherwise, your neighborship will go down. But with RIP, it works a little bit differently. We can define a one-way uh, directional neighborship and the other way will still be able to use multicast because there's no hello mechanism we're not updating we're not uh, keeping a neighborship active we're just sending out blindly basically sending out updates to whoever is willing to listen so that is basically how rip uh, passive interfaces work so if you have uh, got a troubleshooting tip ticket and it focuses on rip passive interfaces and it says something like make sure that this uh, neighbor will not be able to receive updates from this neighbor. The passive interface might not be the complete answer. Make sure that you clear the IP routing table because RIP can be very tricky uh, and make sure that you do not see the routes on the other router if you have a requirement like that. So thank you for your time.